Good morning, everyone. My name is Dore Vactor, CEO of Cleveland Dance Movement. And we have here today Miss Joan Myers Brown, founder of Philadelphia Dance. Good morning. Good morning, Miss Joan Myers Brown. It is absolutely a pleasure of not only just talking to you today, but just being in the room with you at any time that I am with you. Um, I, I just want to say thank you, thank you, thank you from the bottom of my heart of being able to um, just share, um, you know, this day with you today and all the days that I do spend with you. I want to just tell everyone, I met Miss Joan Mars Brown in 1996 at my very first IABD with um, Geraldine Blendon. And I had the pleasure and the honor to go to that one. That was, um, it was um, the, it didn't have the whistles and the blows like we have now. It was just <laughs> coming together, sitting around the table with Walter Nix and Mary Hinkson and Joe Nash and uh, uh, Chuck Davis and being able to meet you five beautiful divas who started the organization. But enough about how I met, and which I keep dear to my heart. I just want to know what made you a West Philadelphia girl born and raised wanting to dance? Well, actually, I never really thought that. I, I really thought I wanted to be an artist because my mother was an artist. And I like dabbling in uh, watercolor. So I thought I would I would be an artist, but uh, the 4-H club at my school back in the day when schools were segregated, she mm -hmm. told me, and when I was five, six years old, the 4-H club used to come to our school and teach dance and teach music and because we didn't have those classes in our school. So I got introduced to dance by someone in the 4-H club. They would put on little shows with the kids in the school. Then they would move on to another school, and then we would be, uh, you know, having our introduction to the arts that way. But and I would do a uh, little dance skits on my front porch for the neighborhood kids, thinking I could teach them something. And it just was always a part of my life. But I really didn't get serious about it till I got in high school, and I got oh. an opportunity to study really study. And there was a dance teacher at the school. It was the after school program. It wasn't a neighborhood dancing school until right. later. So when I uh, graduated from high school, I'm, I went to dance. I started dancing. And I wanted to be a ballet dancer because that's what I was introduced to by my mm -hmm. dancers, teacher in school. But there weren't opportunities for Black girls then. And I ended up dancing in nightclubs. With a, I danced with Sammy Davis's show, Cab Calloway, Pearl Bailey. They all had the, the reviews and they carried dancers. And so I had, had some dance training. And so that's kind of what, how I got into dance professionally. But it also made me realize that Black girls didn't have the opportunity to receive the training that was out there and that should have been part of their, their skills to ask is like why dance and why is dance important to society and its life as a whole I think why is dance important I think babies dance and don't even know they're dancing I uh, think moving the body and using the body to express yourself is uh, something that is part of our culture a part of life I think and sometimes people who can't speak can j make gestures to uh, people understand what they're meaning. So I think dance is something that most people do if it's at a wedding or a party or or if you just feel like if the music starts, if your body starts to move, and, you know, without training. Uh, a little bit. So you, you went from dancer to director. Uh, so Danka, how did, I know that started in 1970. 70, yes. But when you started Philadelphia, how did you come up with that name, though? Well, you know, it's A-B-T-D-T-H-A-P-P. -P. I said, I didn't want to be called A-B-T or something. I said, what could I call the company differently? 
So I put Philadelphia Dance Company together and came up with Phila Danko. And, uh, you know, it's so funny. People don't even know the Philadelphia Dance Company, but they know Phila Danko because uh, it's a catchy name that just, it, it's been our, our uh, brand ever since I came up with that. I thought I was kind of smart to do that. Because <laughs> even Dance State of Harlem is called DTH. Uh-huh. You know? Yes. Yeah. Has a little catchy thing to it. I know it's Philadelphia. It's just the name, but within Philadelphia, you have like four schools or four components. I have two dancing schools, which are mm -hmm. called the Philadelphia School of Dance Arts. Then I have four performing groups, starting with kids from age eight up to twelve. Then we go twelve to fifteen. Then fifteen to twenty-three. Then we had the professional group. So I felt that if I started the kids younger with training and being used to being trained and not just uh, bebop and hip hop and shake your can, you know, like you see on television, all the, uh, right. it's, exactly. you know, that it's, it's, a, it's an art form that needs to be, have discipline. So that's yeah. why I start with my youngsters at the age of eight with the four companies and Back the kids dance last week. Well, I was in Florida at a show. So. Wow! Yeah, you have you have a great team to keep to keep that uh, the court mm -hmm. together at all times. I know you said you uh, had students as young as eight, but you also too had some very very um, famous students come out of your school. Uh, Hope Boykin, um, name just to name a few. Um, oh yeah, Leslie Odom, Lee Daniels. Yes, Leslie, Danny G. So many, so many of the my kids use dance training as a platform for their life skills. Like, Absolutely, yeah. that's it's good because it, it it gives us an example that you mm -hmm. don't have to be a dancer to benefit from dance training. You become a better person by benefiting from dance training. Well, tell us a little bit about pieces that you're going to be bringing to Cleveland that we're going to be able to definitely see. Well, you know, a lot of people, when, especially wives, they had to bring their husbands to a dance concert, don't mm -hmm. want to go to see ballet. So yeah. we have to do something that incorporates a, a many, many different kinds of dance. Some with ballet bass, some with a hip hop. We want to do a hip hop piece for our people that like hip hop. We're going to do a piece that's more modern. I, I like to do a varied program so mm -hmm. that I can say there's something for everybody. When people say that, oh, I didn't like that, but I like this, or oh, that piece was good. Well, I don't know what, you know, so if we do four different ballets, each mm -hmm. one is going to be different, a different choreographer, a different uh, focus, and also the different style of dance. And mm -hmm. I think that way it makes it enjoyable for everybody in the audience. And it's not just, you're not going to just see nothing cracker and cinderella you're going to see nutcracker cinderella bookend you know <laughs> <laughs> we're going to get all yeah you're going to get it all you're going to get it all. and uh, having been in the cleveland several times again i know that the audience there is is a dance audience that they go to dance and see dance and they want to see new dance and new things and that, but also they want to see training what sets philodenco apart and make it a special it makes it special, put it that way. You know, we were at the um, uh, showcase recently and someone said to me that they were a trained dancer and it was a long time since they've seen dancers dance the way Fela Danko dances. I'm like, well, what's different? They said, the way that you tell your stories, the way you, your training shows up, the way that you have variety in the work that you do. It's, it's such an honor. Like I said, I um, I look forward to any people of color who want to continue to dance as if they haven't danced like old people like myself, who's not dancing on a regular basis to come to the conference. Uh, the International Association of Blacks and Dance Conference is going to be in Memphis, Tennessee uh, in 2024 in January. And it's going to be in Pittsburgh for all these Cleveland people who are looking at this uh, interview today to know that it's going to be there in 2025. And you have such a, been honored uh, in so many places. 
You were honored by Barack Obama. Uh, the organization was honored by uh, Joe Biden. And then you also, too, you were honored by the, uh, the NAACP. You were honored by the uh, Stella Awards. So out of all the awards that you have received, Ms. Myers, what was the one that was really, the one that really choked you up? Like, wow. Well, my first honorary doctorate, you know, when I got to, got a doctorate, and I said, they're going to call me Dr. Brown. But now <laughs> I have three. Now I have three. So I'm like, okay, I got a doctor. But so when, when I got the call, the call to go mm -hmm. to uh, Washington, to the White House, my company was on the way to Chile. And I said, oh, I have to be in Chile. I can, no, they said, you had to be in Washington. I said, for what? I had to, but when I heard it was Obama, I told the company, y'all go to Chile. I'm going to Washington. Because I felt in my lifetime, at my age, I'll never see another Black president. Yeah. I have never get another award from the president of the United States, not knowing that Biden would uh, give one to IABD, which we started. And I, I, I thought that to me was the epitome of recognition. Yes. Yeah. So yeah. I, 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 even though, and the reason that he gave me the award, a friend of mine gave him my, the book that was written about me. Because oh. when, I came, when I came up to get my award, he said, I read your book. I said, I didn't write it. He said, but I read it. You know? <laughs> so that to me was like, wow, here I am talking to the president. And he, yeah. said, he was just so warm and welcoming. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That is beautiful. That is so beautiful. I just want to thank you very much for allowing to take your time out this morning to speak to me. I will be speaking to you soon, sooner than you think. And it, uh, so as always, it's been a pleasure and it's always a pleasure. And uh, thank you. And Cleveland Dance uh, Movement uh, thanks you also uh, for entrusting us to do the conference in Cleveland in 2015. It was uh, really, really special for not only us, but for the city of Cleveland. So for Dance Cleveland and Cuyahoga Community College, who are the main sponsors who's bringing Philadelphia, I want to thank them today. And um, is there any final words you want to say before you come to Cleveland? Well, I was going to say to you, is there anything you forgot to ask me? I'll be in the office all day today. You can call me back and I'll be glad to answer that question. You, forgot. So I meant, you know how you always say, I meant to ask so. But I, right. I'll be available for you. I'll be available while I'm in town to do whatever Thanks. you need me to do. And also to make sure that people enjoy Philodanko as much as we enjoy being there. Yes. And all those people who love you like I do, we call you Auntie Joan because it's a term of endearment because we love you. But Miss Mo Joan Myers-Brown, I'm going to say until we meet again on the phone or in person. So thank you very much. And I'll talk to you soon. Thank you for having us. Have a good day. Bye. Bye-bye.